Hello and welcome to another Brawl video. Today we're taking a look at Omo, Queen of Vesuva, which is a deck that tries to turn all lands into all types and all creatures into all creature types. And there's a lot of ways to approach this deck. I ended up going for Mesa's End as one of my primary win conditions. So the goal is to get 10 or more gates in play after activating Mesa's End to win the game. Now, as you'll notice, we only actually have six gates in our deck, and these are the only gates available in the Simic Colors in Brawl. So how do we win the game with Mesa's End? Well, that's where our commander will come in handy. Omo, Queen of Vesuva, is a 1-5, and when it enters a battlefield or attacks, we can put an everything counter on each of up to one target land and up to one target creature. And a land with an everything counter on it has all land types in addition to its other types, which means it's now a desert, a cave, but also a gate, and that's the one we're most interested in. And then each non-land creature with an everything counter on it has every creature type, so you can sort of think of it as a changeling, which can also have some neat synergies, as we'll get to in a second. So the goal is going to be to deploy Omo and attack with it a few times to turn our lands into gates, and then we'll hopefully have enough to win with Mesa's End. So it's a pretty convoluted deck, don't expect it to be particularly competitive, so you're definitely playing things in hard mode when uh, trying to win with Omo as your commander on arena but hopefully it'll be worth it so now for a brief breakdown of the different categories here starting with our mana acceleration pretty typical for a blue green deck we're going to try and put additional lands on the battlefield to give us more mana and that will also contribute towards the mazes and the game plan then we've got a whole bunch of cards that let us search for non-basics specifically, since while getting basics is fine, eventually we'll need to start getting those gates in play to win with Mesa's End, so getting non-basic lands specifically is important, that way we can also find Mesa's End at some point. And then we've got a landfall package, of course we're putting a lot of lands in play, so any landfall payoffs are welcome. Then we've got some creatures that will benefit from having everything counters on them. We've got some slivers, which of course are great when all your creatures count as slivers, as well as some elves and even merfolk that will help pump the team. And then we've got our miscellaneous section with additional card draw, maybe ways to bounce opposing creatures back as a bit of interaction, and ways to copy Omo so we can get more everything counters on everything. And then as we've uh, mentioned here, we've got our gates, also separated the deserts, and then we've got some more interesting lands like Thespian Stage, which can copy a land in play, or Urza's Cave, which can also search up a land in our library and put it on the battlefield. So that's kind of the rough breakdown. Now for the deep dive, starting with the mana acceleration. At one mana, there's a Grazer and Kami to put an extra lane in play. Halfling, Elvish Mystic, and the Lenor Elves can just tap for mana. Then we've got Explore to play an extra land and draw, similar to Growth Spiral. And then there's Kellen's Adventure, which makes a clue token in addition to letting us play an extra land. And another cool synergy worth pointing out with Kellen is if we control a Tangle Pool Bridge, this indestructible artifact land can be targeted by Kellen if it attacks, netting us a card so we get to draw. And because it's indestructible, of course, we're not going to lose our land, so this can draw us an extra card each turn, basically. Then we've got Into the North to find a snow-covered land, which is why we have some snow-covered basics and the Rhymewood Falls. We've got Arcane Signet for ramp, and then a few creatures that let us play an additional land each turn. Azusa even playing two additional lands can also be very nice if we have maybe a way to replay lands out of the graveyard with our fetch lands. Also good if we can start playing lands of the top of the deck, so there's a few applications. And then Ride of Elysian Grove also fixes our colors. We've got the Swordtooth, eventually a 5-5, and then Orc of Moldaya can also play lands of the top of the deck, and we can play one more each turn, so it can also provide a lot of value. Then we've got your more typical ramp cards with Cultivate, and now also the new Flare of Cultivation, which we can cast for free if we sacrifice a non-token green creature, especially good with Grazer and Kami at one mana. Spelunking lets us play an extra land, draw a card, and we now have our lands entering untapped, so especially good with Maze's End, which otherwise enters tapped, and the land we get also enters tapped, so now we can more easily combo off. Then there's Uro has another way to draw and play an extra land. And then we've got Eureka Moment to draw two and put an extra land in play. And then for the non-basic search effects, there's Elvish Reclaimer, which can pay two mana and sacrifice a land to get any land and put it on the battlefield tapped. We've got Open the Gates to find either basics or gates. We'll often get a Baldur's Gate to begin with, as that can eventually generate additional mana if we've got a few extra gates in play. Especially good if we get it going with our commander, turning more lands into gates early. Then we've got Sylvan's Crying, which can get any land for two mana. District Guide, another way to get a basic or a gate. 
Then the green blade can get a basic or a desert, and I've also separated the deserts here. Don't have a ton of payoffs for deserts. Oasis can still maybe pump a creature. Archway is a bounce land, so we have to pick up a land when it enters, and if we pick up a desert we get to surveil one. Pylons also lets us surveil one, and then Scavenger Grounds gives us a bit of graveyard hate. And besides pumping up the green blade, we're also playing all these deserts to enable our copy of Hour of Promise. If we have three or more deserts after searching two lanes, we also get to make a pair of zombie tokens. So that's another neat little payoff. And then there's the Archroot Charm, which can find any land or maybe a creature. Can also go after Primeval Titan, which is one of the cards that at least we get to play in Brawl compared to Commander, where it's banned. So this is very powerful, getting to search two lands when it enters and attacks, so it can quickly assemble all our gates to win the game. Then there's the Construction Drone. Since we don't have access to the Urza lands on Arena, at least this is a way to maybe get access to them. And then having all land types also means we have all these different Urza types in play, which means we can more easily generate extra mana with our Urza's Tower, for instance. Then we've got a route to find two gates, potentially. Omen Path Journey can find five different lands, which we can slowly, over time, put on the battlefield. The new Myco spawn is excellent. We also have some colorless sources to help kick it, to not only find any land, but also blow up an opposing one. Scape Shift is excellent if we have some landfall payoffs on the battlefield, as we can now sacrifice as many lands as we want to replace them with any other land we want. So ideally we keep all our gates on the battlefield and search up all the remaining gates in our deck. And then we also have Titania's Command, which can find two lands, as well as making bear tokens or giving us some plus one counters. And then Ulvenwald Hydra gets to find one land when it enters, and then also grows with a number of lands on the battlefield with a reach. And then our landfall payoffs include Lotus Cobra and Nissa making mana with landfall, Nissa finding additional elves and elementals as well. Skewed Swarm can start going wide, so that can also be a legitimate win condition, just by making a whole bunch of Skewed Swarms to overwhelm the opponent. Provisioner can generate additional treasure tokens, so pretty similar to Lotus Cobra and Nissa. And then Tireless Tracker making clue tokens can provide more card advantage, as well as Tatiova gaining a life and drawing a card with Landfall. And then our creature type payoffs include a few slivers, Diffusion Sliver giving our team Ward 2 as long as they have an everything counter, Mana Weft Sliver turning them into mana creatures, and then Master of the Pearl Trident is excellent, as we can also target the opponent's land with an everything counter, so then as long as we control Omo, all our creatures will have Island Walk as long as they have an everything counter on them. And then we've got Priest of Titania, which will make more mana the more elves we have on the battlefield. Already have a few elves to begin with. And then a Feline Sovereign is an excellent way to blow up artifacts and enchantments if we can hit the opponent. And then Archdruid is similar to Priest of Titania, also pumping the team. And then our miscellaneous section has a bit of card draw with Brainstorm, have plenty of shuffle effects to make sure we can shuffle unwanted cards away between fetch lands and our other ramp spells. Then we've got Confounding Conundrum to maybe stop opposing fetch lands and ramp cards from being effective. Fierce Empath can get Primeval Titan or Ulvomalt Hydra. The Excavator lets us replay our fetch lands from the graveyard. And then we've got a few bounce spells here with Whelming Wave, which also has great synergy with Omo turning our creatures into Krakens, Leviathans, etc. As well as a River's Rebuke as another one-sided bounce effect. Time Warp to take an extra turn. Helm of the Host to make copies of Omo, so those can also immediately attack if we wanted to, to make two additional everything counters each turn essentially. And then we've got the Mortal Sun, since we're not playing any Planeswalkers, to shut those down, draw us extra cards and pump the team. And then we've covered most of the mana base already that's worth mentioning. Our gates include the Gate to Sea Tower and Gate to Manorborn as well, so those can give us a nice ability if we're flooding out a bit. And then uh, all the other gates available pretty much, including Baldur's Gate. And then Gateway Plaza also requires one extra mana, so not particularly powerful, but we're just playing as many gates as we can get our hands on. And then we mentioned the deserts, Thespian Stage to copy lanes, Urza's Cave to search them up. And then we've got a few more utility lands here with the channel lands, Odawara and Boseju. We've got a Green Castle to maybe ramp out our Primeval Titan or Hydra a turn ahead of schedule. And then plenty of blue-green dual lands, including our uh, Hedge Maze and Breeding Pool, which we can also search up with our green and blue fetch lands. So those can also give us additional uh, landfall triggers by providing two lands in one turn. So those are also pretty important. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw and facing the Myco Tyrant, so a Descent deck. We actually have some nice creatures here to combine with Omo. 
Priest to make a lot of mana, Master to make our creatures unblockable, hopefully. Although we're missing a more exciting turn one play. Uh, let's go with the Yavamaya Coast. That leaves up the option of Brainstorm in response to a discard spell to hide some of our payoffs. And then we can either Master or Priest on two, probably starting with Priest. Opponent with a, a Burrow Fiend. That's fine. Lotus Cobra is also tempting, but if I play Priest and next turn Omo, then I'll still be able to play Cobra afterwards. As we'll control two Elves, plus our opponent could always play an extra Elf as well. And then eventually we'll want to target the opponent's land with Omo, so they also control an Island for Island Walk. Myco Tyrant, no Descend. And uh, yeah, we can surveil here if we'd like, get an extra desert in play for our promise. Feline Sovereign, opponent doesn't seem to be presenting too many artifacts, although it is another way to maybe pump the team. Since I don't think we're on the uh, Maces End plan this game, I think we're just on Creature Beatdown, in which case Feline Sovereign's a fine addition. Play Omo. And then we can still play Lotus Cobra. Okay, so next turn might be able to deploy Master and Feline Sovereign, attacking with Omo, targeting an opposing land to give the team Island Walk, which is going to be important to get past all these tokens they could start generating. Okay, so play a land. Play Master and Sovereign. And then Omo can attack alongside, I guess, one other creature that we're gonna turn into all types, make it Lotus Cobra. And then their land. And my Lotus Cobra. And then Feline Sovereign can actually blow up enchantments as well, so yeah, goodbye Insidious Roots. This game's going pretty well. Ooh, Calling Ritual. Yeah, that's uh, gonna set us back. Goodbye Master, Cobra and Priest. And five mana to spend on a Murderous Cut. Back to the Command Zone, now really hoping for a land so we can cast our Promise. Tatiova is also kind of stuck here, so might be time for Brainstorm, hope to hit a land at least, and then next turn we can shuffle with our Promise. Right, found a Tracker, can still play Bridge, and then put a land on top, don't think we need Conundrum, so we can shuffle that away. And uh, sure, we'll attack. Well, we had a very fun start to the game, but a uh, culling ritual was quite effective. Would have blown up their own insidious roots had we not uh, done it first. And our opponent's gonna start going wide with all these fungus tokens. And yeah, Blood Artist can make it so they deal damage on the way out. Do have Tatiova here, which could help. Maybe worth playing before Hour of Promise, just to get more triggers. And then I'll redraw Conundrum, which I'm not too excited about. Do I have a Desert in play? I do have the Pylon, so getting two more Deserts also nuts me a pair of Zombies. I think I would rather still get Tatiova going first. And then... Now I don't have any great attacks. If they answer Tantiova, still have the clue tokens from Tireless Tracker to draw. But yeah, now we don't have a clear game plan now that we lost our uh, Master of the Pearl Tridents. It's going to be harder to connect. Shadow Archdruid. Okay. I guess we can block. Mm -hmm. 
Blood Artist triggers a bunch. And Fierce Empath, alright, that's a way to access Primeval Titan. For now, still gonna Hour of Promise, I think. And then we want to get two Deserts. Could also get Archway as another way of enabling Landfall, since we haven't played Land for turn. And then second Desert could be Oasis. And then Archway pick up maybe the Pylons to Surveil again. Don't need Reclaimer. And then I can still sack a clue. Alright, that was a fun turn. Diffusion Sliver is going to be good once we have Omo in play to protect our creatures a bit better, but doesn't really help get through all the blockers. And we drew Primeval Titan, so don't even need to search for it. And I guess we'll Conundrum instead of sacking a clue. Okay, that looks better. Uh, still no great attacks. So we might be back on the Mesa's Ends win condition with Titan getting two gates. And I uh, can double block the 1 4 and only lose one zombie. Opponent does get to make some tokens end of turn. Five of them, in fact, although Whelming Wave to the rescue can also bounce all those tokens back. Maybe for now we're still better off casting Primeval Titan, get some more lands in play, draw with Tatiova. Never a bad thing. So yeah, let's get Baldur's Gate plus maybe one of these. And then, yeah, we can still cast Root as well. Scoot Swarm can start going wide if we'd like. But uh, yeah, let's just Root, get two more gates in play. Can make it Thran Portal, Semi Guild Gates, or Gates to Sea Tower and Guild Gates. So we have one actual gate left in the deck, plus one in hands, and then we'll need to start using Omo to make more. And for now, no attacks. And then discard to hand size, donate Empath, since we have everything we need. Scavenger Grounds, exiling their graveyard could maybe still come in handy, although Windswept Teeth is pretty good too. So tough choice. Uh, maybe Kami. Even though playing an extra land could be somewhat useful too. So now we have multiple avenues to victory, but I think Mesa's Ends might be the most fun one. Alright, we do have to be careful now with both Cutthroat and Artist. These 1-1s one represent a lot of damage. So I could just take 5, or I could block and essentially take 10. But uh, yeah, they're gonna get me at some point. If I Whelming Wave, they get bounced. I guess we'll just try that next turn. Alright, so we have options. If I play Omo, I can turn one thing into a uh, Kraken or Leviathan, so it stays in play post uh, Whelming Wave. And uh, Primeval Titan could be the pick. So can uh, still play a fetch land for Tatiova. Kind of still want to play Nissa first and get those landfall triggers from Tatiova before we Whelming Wave. Should have a basic left. Yeah, I'm kind of regretting uh, getting rid of the Kami now, since the extra land would have been pretty useful. But we also have Spelunking, which can make it so my land enters untapped. OK, 
can put in Gateway Plaza. Pay the one. And then I guess we'll Whelming Wave now. Put it back in the hand. And can still replay my commander if I can find it. Attack with Primeval Titan, which can now get Maze's End, which will enter untapped. And then, don't know how many gates we have in play, but I guess we'll find out if we win here. We don't quite. Alright, so I'll have to get there next turn. And then discard six cards. Shouldn't be too difficult. Don't need Tireless Tracker anymore. Sovereign can go. Alright, so... Should not have tried to activate Maze's End and should have tried to count first. But we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I was just missing one gate in play. So one more Omo trigger would do it. So can just attack and then uh, that should do it. Could also clear a path with Archer's Charm. And get two more lands, but these don't matter too much since I'm out of gates. Sunken Citadel would be a good one to get as well since it gives us a discount for abilities. There we go. Mazes and enters untapped thanks to Spelunking, so we can immediately activate. And this time we should have enough gates in play. If I can find Mazes and. I guess what I also could have considered is um, getting our um, copy of Thespian's stage to copy a gate that's already in play, and that way. We would have had one more gate to win last turn potentially already. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Yoti, the Ancient. So this one makes Dryad tokens and then can pump up one of the lanes. Our hand's pretty decent. Um, sadly, no untapped land on turn one. So that will have to wait. But we still have Mystic and Cobra to speed things up. And in fact, I think Cobra turn 2 makes sense. Skewed Swarm is good, but I would rather find more lands to begin with. Castle enters untapped thanks to Rhymewood Falls, that's nice. Start with an Explorer. And then should be able to play the Archdruid right now. And then next turn we can look into activating Castle Garenbrig to deploy the rest of our creatures. Or we can maybe get our Promise going. Opponent with a Midnight Clock. And Confounding Conundrum could maybe slow the opponent down as well. So we have options. Usually it's better to develop our mana first. So if I play the Elf, Archdruid still makes the same amount of mana. So I don't think we'll be using Castle Garenbrig this turn. And then we can Hour of Promise. And then we already have a Desert with the Conduit Pylon, so getting two more Deserts will generate Zombies, which seems worth it. And then getting the Archway is not a bad idea, so I have a Land Drop for next turn to enable Landfall. And then another desert, make it Hash Up Oasis. So we get our zombies, get two mana, and we'll pick up maybe the pylons to surveil again. And a micro spawn looks good. 
And then I guess we can still play the pylon since we hadn't played land for a turn. Which then lets me play Omo. Keep that one on top. Or we could go for Helm of the Host even. I guess it's the more mana efficient play. And they could technically still have a, a wash away to counter my commander. And then next turn I might have the mana to play Omo and immediately equip Helm to start making copies. And then Myco Spawn wants to get our uh, Mesa's End at some point. Okay, so yeah, let's see how much mana we're working with. If I play Omo first, maybe activate Castle. Is that worth it? Myco Spawn I would prefer to play Kicked, so we can take out Nykthos. So maybe that's just my turn, no Omo. If I play Omo, I get an extra elf, which means Archer it makes an extra mana. Let's see, play Omo, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we'll still have plenty of mana to kick Myco Spawn, so that looks good. And then target, let's say, one of my deserts. Now we're looking to make gates instead. With Kicker. Take out Nykthos. And we can search up either Baldur's Gate or maybe Mesa's End here. As a mana sink. And I'll still have the mana for Confounding Conundrum. A little bit short of equipping Helm of the Host, but that's okay. Not a bad turn, can still play a land. And don't think we need to activate anything else. Okay, that's good enough. All my cards are on the table, but my lands still have some uh, fun things left to do. So now with Helm and Omo, we can get multiple extra gates in play. Temporal Sundering gives the opponent an extra turn. Don't think we care too much about the zombie. I guess it means less mana from Archdruid. Opponent passes, but yeah, now if they're keeping up counter spells, we don't really mind. Cyclonic Rifts, alright, that we do care about. So, we do get a chance to float some mana here. And then maybe use that mana to activate Maze's End. Because, yeah, let's see here. Midnight Clock happens. I would have to use it now. And we'll get a gate. Can make it the Sea Tower one. And then Azusa gives us more land drops. Can uh, kick the spawn once again. That's decent. So how much mana are we working with? If I use Castle and leave Colorless available. Yeah, I might be able to play Archdruid and still kick Myco Spawn. That looks good. And then I guess we hadn't played Land for a turn yet, so I can play Mesa's End as well. Can I play Cobra first? Cobra, Land, Landfall. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I guess that works. Although I might have miscounted since Forgot Mazes and Enter Stamped. Alright, in that case, no kicked Myco Spawn, can still cast it regularly. Or we can get uh, more elves going with Omo. Never a bad thing. And maybe play the Conundrum, can play the Elvish Mystic next turn before tapping Archerid. Alright, so opponent got to cast Cyclonic Rift, already got to cast Temporal Sundering, some of the more powerful blue instants and sorceries. So hopefully they don't have too many of those left. And yeah, we're in a good position to win with Mesa's End, don't really care about Wormcoil Engine. Ulvomalt Hydra is nice too. Alright, so step one, probably activate Castle. 
play Elvish Mystic before tapping Archdruid. Gonna assume we can play that one untapped. Micro spawn with Kicker. Don't wanna tap Mesa's End though. Take out maybe their campus. Finds Baldur's Gate, which enters untapped as well, so that's nice. And then activates Baldur's Gate. Can play Ovenwald Hydra. I guess I even forgot about Archdruid, so that can still make mana for us. Yeah, we're in uh, good shape. Get more gates. I'm sure we could have sequenced things a little differently here. So this makes three mana, four, five, six, seven. Can maybe activate Mesa's End. How many gates do we have in play now? One, two, three, four. Five, six, so we're not quite there yet, but we're getting close. Yeah, let's maybe just go Azusa, activate Mesa's End. And get another gate. Could attack Omo into Worm Coil just to get another trigger, but it doesn't seem super necessary. Can just copy stuff next turn with Helm of the Host. And then I'm pretty sure we'll have enough gates to win. Scavenger grounds as a gate. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mesa's end gets another gate, makes eight. So if Helm copies Omo and we attack, we should get there. And uh, could just take six. Could trade for Hydra. I'll just take it. Escape shifts can also get some more gates, but uh, let's keep it simple. Helm equip, don't want to tap Mesa's end if I can avoid it. Go to attackers. Does our opponent have a bounce spell? Looks like it. Or just Otawara for the helm, fair enough. Can still attack with Omo, however. And I guess our opponent didn't wait until we were in combat, which I guess makes sense, otherwise we would get the helm trigger. So I can still actually replay it. Equip. Not sure if I'll have the mana to then also activate Mesa's Ends, but we'll find out. Okay. Equip Omo. Yeah, I guess I would have had enough mana had I waited to tap Archroot, because then I would have had one more elf. And now I believe I'm going to be one mana short of activating Mesa's End. Oh well, we'll get there next turn. Omo down. And then next turn Mesa's End should win us the game. Potent seems pretty far from doing the same. Vorinclex. Alright. I'll only need to tap my lands one more time. They do get to draw a fresh hand. And uh, yeah, let's keep it simple. Activate Mesa's end. And get a gate. And that's our last one. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the draw facing Jeru and Hazrets. Can be incredibly powerful if they hit the right legendaries early. Our hands got potential with Primeval Titan mostly. So hopefully it can come down and uh, do some damage. For now, I guess I can wait on playing Pathway. But it's probably going to be on green, so we can into the north. And then we want to try to cast Root as soon as possible. Although right now, with how my lands sequenced, I wouldn't be able to cast a 4-drop next turn, since this required 1 mana. This now enters tapped. And a Sword of Fire and Ice. At least doesn't have protection from green. All right, now with the pylons we can root, which is probably worth it. Azusa, we already have Dryad, so that seems a little bit overkill. Get two gates, Baldur's Gate and maybe the green one here, or can get the Simic Guild Gate. Let's get the green one. And then Dryad's gonna fix our colors anyway. But uh, yeah, getting Primeval Titan going is more important. A Brunor equipped by the sword for free, so that's very scary as well. Okay, let's uh, go for Primeval Titan. Get more gates. Can go Simic Guild Gates. Could also get Mesa's End. But for now we're still kind of in the early stages. We're maybe not forced to get it right away, although... Yeah, if they answer Primeval Titan, maybe it's still better to get it now. And then next turn, we can empty the rest of our hand. Opponents counting our gates. Just uh, three gates at the moment, so still a long way to go. Probably fine to take a hit from Bruinor. Does seem like they might have removal here. March for six. At least it took them an extra card. But that's an exiled Titan now. And we are under quite a bit of pressure. Okay, so Spelunking can put in a desert. Not quite a cave. Uh, so it doesn't gain me any life. But maybe start there, see what we draw. A land. If I put in Gateway Plaza, then I'll have two gates besides Baldur's Gate, so we're still not netting additional mana, so that's not too important. Uh, but I guess having this enter untapped is nice. And then pick up our uh, forest. Could have also picked up uh, the gate after activating it once, but for now that's not a priority. So we want to get Omo down. Make more gates, and then just get more blockers down, I guess. And ideally target something that's not a desert, so we can grow with a green blade even more. Uh, so, pathway. And then I can still play Dryad. And green blade. Which is pretty large. Can get another desert. And play it here. Right, 6 7. Can maybe trade for Brunor. Never mind. Spoon's got green protection now as well. Well, I was not expecting the full set of swords here, but that might just kill us. I guess goes up to 11. Two more from. Fire and Ice puts us to one, but I don't see us winning next turn. And I guess never mind, Brunor gets an extra bonus for each equipment, so we're just dead here. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the God of Winter, so Snow Deck. Our hand's a little clunky, with only two lands, do get to play Kami on one. So if I draw a third land, we get to play Green Blade, which finds a desert, can get to Archway to pick a land up. Alright, maybe this is fine, as long as we just draw a land here. 
If we don't, I don't have a whole lot going on next turn. Turn one death right shaman, that's a good one. And we drew the archway. Alright, not quite what I was hoping for, but better than not drawing a land at all. So next turn could get Omo going. Or can go provisioner into a land, make a treasure. Don't have a whole lot of synergy with creature types in play right now. But getting more deserts helps the green blade. And eventually we'll want more gates. Right, drew a desert. Sure, I guess playing the green blade here can hold off God of Winter from attacking. So I don't hate that idea. And then can uh, get the uh, pylons maybe. Could have considered just playing that for the turn to surveil. So no easy attack to untap their lands. And then next turn I could go provisioner, play a land, still play something else. Opponent's gonna dig up a uh, basic. And a grazer, that's fine. So no blue mana at the moment it seems, so they might just be focusing on the front side of the god. And yeah, that's a dead god of winter. Although they can cast binding now, finishing off the green blade, that's fine. It did its job. So step one provisioner. Can play the forest now, maybe wait on the surveil. And do I want to play my commander? Swordtooth is an option too. And then I can still go pylons into signets. Maybe a bit more explosive. And we want a random Yavimaya coast. It's still a land for Provisioner, so it's probably fine to keep. Okay. So we have 9 out of 10 permanents needed for the City's Blessing. And Titania's Command can start finding some of our better lands, thinking of Baldur's Gate, maybe Mesa's End. So we have the city's blessing. And uh, start here. So we'll get two lanes. And then I guess I could play Omo first just to go for plus one counters. Uh, let's see, four, five, six. Yeah, that should work. Turn Kami into all creature types. And then Baldur's Gate plus Mesa's End, potentially a fine pairing. And then with the uh, Sword Tooth in play, we can activate Mesa's End and replay it. And why not get an attack in? So currently have two gates and a mesa's end. We can also activate the vine stalk if we just want to beat down here, which might be the fastest to win condition, but it's good to have a backup plan. And yeah, opponent scoops it up. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing Ulamog the Defiler. So don't expect much removal until Ulamog's gonna remove our entire board. That being said, the Feline Sovereign could be great at destroying artifacts if we can deal damage. So this hand has potential. So we'll start with the uh, Elvish Mystic. Can play Omo on 2 and then Sovereign on 3. Turning some of our creatures into cats in the meantime with Omo's ability. 
And then Skewed Swarm can maybe try and go off. Alright, Flare of Cultivation is interesting too. And I wouldn't be able to sacrifice tokens from Skewed Swarm to it either. So yeah, it's an interesting uh, card here. So let's go with Omo. Maybe targeting itself and the Scavenger Grounds. And then yeah, maybe Flare for Elvish Mystic anyway. And get Islands, Snow-Covered Islands. And then if I play Feline Sovereign, if our opponent played some 2-mana artifact, we can immediately blow it up. Alright, no play from our opponent. So maybe we'll keep the Sovereign a surprise for now. And then go Scute Swarm, play a land. Attack. And targets. Just the uh, island's fine. And the insect token, which will then also be a cat. Bone's gonna need to start playing ramp artifacts at some point, I imagine, and there's one of them. Okay. So, play Sovereign, can play Pylons to Surveil. Not gonna sack the cave just yet. Go to Attackers. Maybe should have made an extra token first, but that's fine. And yeah, get to blow up their mirror now. Make a token, surveil, district guide doesn't seem all that important. Even though it can get, I guess, the uh, Baldur's Gate, which gives us more mana. And yeah, just a feline sovereign enough to beat Ulamog onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is a little slow to get going, admittedly. But uh, yeah, the late game is powerful, Time War, Primeval Titan. So I'll give it a shot, facing the Scholar of Antiquity. So you can expect lots of cheap artifacts and then some uh, payoffs as well. Goblin Engineer. One of the better artifacts in this deck is Howling Mind, since they can tap it so it only draws the opponent extra cards each turn. Goes for Semblance Anvil. And we can play Conundrum here. Already have Primeval Titan in hand, so Empath can get Ulvenwald Hydra. Although, for now, we're hoping to get our fourth land. Two mana for Ornithopter. They could sack it to the Engineer, but I guess no red mana available. And we found a land, that's good. So for now, play my commander. Next turn, cast Root. Turn after, maybe Primeval Titan. And then with Scape Shift in hand, I can also get more gates at some point. Especially good if we have a landfall creature in play that can generate mana with each land. So then I may not want to get all my gates right away, because if I end up sacrificing some of them, it's better to have them in the deck. So opponent can now use Goblin Engineer. They probably want to tap the Ornithopter first, get Semblance Anvil, and then we'll see what else they can cast. So they likely imprint an artifact here to give those a 2 mana discount. And uh, Jorah's Familiar for another 1 mana discount. So they can cast 3 mana artifacts for free now. And we're just gonna stick to the plan. Cast Root. No real point in surveilling when we're gonna shuffle. Yeah, we're probably not gonna cast Scapeshift this game, so I'm fine to just get 2 gates. 
And then I could attack with Omo, although the opponent will be able to double block just to turn one land into a gate. So I'm probably better off waiting. So I can get the two monocolored gates. So Baldur's Gate close to and adding us extra mana. Mishra's Bobble, what they found of the ability. Zephyr Boots for flying. And more cheap trinkets. And Myriad Attacks. So I think the plan still Primeval Titan before we Time Warp, so we can maybe get an extra attack in. Opponent finds Junkyard Scraper. Can't play that one. Unless, I guess, never mind. They exiled both an artifact and a creature with Anvil, so creatures also get a 2 mana discount. So now time for Primeval Titan. And I think we're still on the gate plan. Could also get Maze's End already. So we have Simic Guild Gate left. As well as the uh, Gateway Plaza. And then Thram Portal. And then now I could surveil one. And actually have a window to attack with Omo, since I can block it profitably. Ottawara, I guess I could keep uh, some interaction. Sure. And then target a non-desert, non-gate land. So maybe the Cascade. And Primeval Titan. Okay, let's see what our opponent can come up with. A mirror shield for hexproof, so Ottawara's probably not gonna hit its target. Can always bounce an artifact with it. I guess bouncing the anvil's not bad. Ooh, Crater of Behemoth, I see. So that's how they're gonna kill me. And uh yeah, they can likely cast it already with a two mana discount. Just need to make a bit of extra green. I was not expecting to die to a Crater Hoof here. But yeah, that'll do it. And GG's, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Brudeclad, Blue Red Tokens. Archer's Charm and answer to artifacts and enchantments as well, but this hand feels a bit too slow and clunky. This is a bit better, and River's Rebuke especially could be effective in this matchup. Put in the gates. Next turn we can play Guide or start with our commander to make more gates, although currently don't have access to Maze's End. Still probably fine to... Play my commander. Could technically still get countered by a wash away, but uh, so it goes. That resolves. So we've got a couple ways to find more gates. Might end up using the gate to Manor Born if I don't have any other mana sinks. A Mechanaut to discount artifact spells. And the Green Blade, alright, that's a payoff for Deserts. So we can open the gates to just get a basic to play right now, and then I can still play the Green Blade, or I can play the Green Blade and then play a Desert, which could also work. If I get Hashap Oasis, I can still cast my Open the Gates. And then maybe get Baldur's Gate. Omo can attack and target a non 
desert non-gate ideally, but we don't have any of those left. So would I rather pump the green blade more or have more gates? I think the answer is have more gates. Okay, so next turn, if I play a Baldur's Gate, we have three gates in play. So it's still kind of mana neutral. A one mana Mind Stone pays for itself. So our opponent's going to try to make some tokens and then upgrade them with Brudeclad, often paired with treasure tokens as well, as we see the Ingenuity. Okay, that's another gate. So don't have a line to get back with Excavator. Yeah, I might want to deploy Baldur's Gate already. So now Baldur's Gate actually nuts us mana. Still kind of interested in activating the Gate to Manorborn. And then wait on River's Rebuke until there's more stuff to bounce. Halfling's not bad. And then District Guide can get the other gate with uh, activated ability. Right, Brutaclad now sets up our River's Rebuke. And I'll just take it. I guess the Treasures could represent a counterspell technically, so that could be scary. Anything I can maybe do to bait it out. Yeah, it's going to be tricky, since there's nothing else they would really want to counter in the first place. So I think we just got to go for it and hope they don't have a counter. Can play Plaza first. Pay the one. Ah, that worked. And can attack all out, I guess. We're on the beatdown plan. Already have only gates on the battlefield. So... Not making too much progress there. Bones at 9. Do have more deserts now for the green blade. Alright, so... Into the north gets a land, can turn that into another gate. Could also use Archway to pick up the gate to Manorborn, or District Guy can get the other one. So we've got a few options. But maybe start by activating Baldur's Gate. Find the blue one. Play Excavator, and can still into the north. And let's go all out. So they can redeploy Brutaclad, making a bunch of two ones but they probably have to play defense to an extent. And now I'm looking to activate the Gate to Sea Tower, maybe pick up the uh, Gate to Manorborn with Archway. So yeah, our hand's not too exciting. Bone could still easily recover and stabilize. This is where a Whelming Wave would be perfect, since we have all these Leviathans and Krakens on the battlefield, if you couldn't tell. So it would turn into a one-sided Reverse Rebuke once again. Finding a Master of the Pearl Trident would give our team Island Walk. So that's another great top deck. Feline Sovereign can help destroy artifacts. So we've got a few decent top decks. Right, just a land. So step one, activate Gate to Sea Tower. Find an Elf. Also can't forget about Hashap Oasis pumping up one of my creatures, so that might also be worth activating. Yeah, I guess we can go for it. 
can grow the Kami. And then I can sacrifice whatever land I want here, doesn't have to be Oasis itself. And smash. Their opponent's on chum block duty. Has to block with a Mechanaut as well. Could have blocked Omo, I suppose, and then take six down to one. Falls to four instead. And our opponent explodes, so yeah, kind of an atypical game for the Omo deck, but sometimes you just go on the beatdown plan. Alright, so we go to see Omo, Queen of Vesuva in action, and as I've stated in the introduction, if you're playing this on Arena right now, it's like you're playing a deck in hard mode, since the deck's not particularly competitive, but you're still gonna face some pretty good commanders along the way, so I would not recommend this as your first brawl experience, but if you happen to have some of these cards, it's always fun to pull out the mazes and win. So yeah, overall, not the best deck for 1v1, probably plays better in a multiplayer setting where you've got more time to set up, and uh, otherwise there's other better win conditions you could play for a blue-green ramp deck on Arena. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!